when we use the term figure ground relationship, we're talking about a subject and a background. Sometimes it can be ambiguous. Is this two faces or is this a vase? We don't want to leave this up to chance. As concept artists, how can we use figure ground relationships to help our artwork? Welcome to episode 13 of the Concept Art Playbook. I've teamed up with a game designer to create a series of 30 concept art challenges for you to tackle. Just like usual, Ryan has created two briefs, one for me, one for you, and let's go ahead and look at mine first. So here I'm going to be designing the play space boundary for a third-person flight combat game called Prize Fighter. In this sci-fi adventure, a pilot and his co-pilot are stranded on a hostile desert planet at the edge of our galaxy. An army of drones have been deployed to search and destroy all remaining life. The player must infiltrate enemy camps in their advanced stealth ship in order to secure resources and information about how to make it back home across the galaxy. In each mission, the player has full freedom to roam inside the boundaries of this makeshift enemy camps, but due to technical limitations, we need to keep them boxed in a 4x4 four four kilometer area. We'll have soft boundaries that prevent the player from flying outside of this boundary, but the play space must be clearly defined visually. The general challenge here seems to be making a fence that's, well, not really a fence, or at least one that's not a huge eyesore. Because when I think about a desert planet, the image that comes to my mind is an infinite horizon. And remember, in this case, the player is a plane. So they can move around, not just on the ground, but up and down as well. And if we need to block them in, that sort of means adding in a wall that's tall enough to block airplanes. And when you do that, you immediately lose that beautiful sense of emptiness. So I need to think of a way to indicate the border of a play space without ruining the view. This is a great opportunity to think about figure ground relationships. For a painting, the figure might be the human, and the ground is everything behind them. For us, we're thinking more about the distinction between the play area and the off-limits area. And there's all sorts of ways to accomplish this visually. There's no confusing the figure ground relationship in a racing game. Cars go here and not here. When you get into rally games, which is sort of off-road racing, they might not have man-made barriers, but hitting one of these rocks at 90 miles an hour would not go very well. So we can easily infer the border for the car to stay inside of, even if there's no clear red and white barrier, like on a track. Or maybe we imagine this exterior at night. We'll say this is a game where there's monsters that live in the shadows, so only the areas that are illuminated are safe. The shadows, they're dangerous. And in this game, I wouldn't need to use any props to make a physical border. We can immediately tell the difference between the play space and the off-limits area. Or what if we swap that? Maybe we're talking about a stealth game. You're an assassin, and well-lit areas put you in danger of being spotted by the guards. The border hasn't changed, but it's reversed which is the figure and which is the ground. Where is it safe to be, and where am I trying to avoid? The game Civilization VI separates the play space at two different levels. Here there's a clear distinction between the explored area and the unexplored area. As you move your settlers around, you're just going to uncover more of this map. And then we have these hex borders, which divide the explored area into movement tiles, just like a board game. The first figure ground relationship here is stark. There's a high contrast difference. It's monochrome on one side, low contrast, looks like old parchment. And then this area is colorful, naturalistic. It looks like a real landscape. There's really no missing this border. The second figure ground relationship is a little less visible. Here we're only using light borders to mark where one hex ends and the next one begins. It's a much more subtle. This seems to be balancing two factors. You're exploring a continuous landscape. As far as your characters are concerned, there's no borders here at all. But Civ 6 is a strategy game, and so having distinct movement tiles is a requirement for gameplay. So as I see it, these are visible enough to be usable, but they're still pretty subtle. They're not very high contrast. In short, there's a million ways to reinforce a figure ground relationship. In my case, I want to show that there is an inside and an outside, and to make the outside seem a bit dangerous, something I want to stay away from. But I have to do it in such a way that it doesn't block the view of this infinite horizon. After some sketching, here's what I came up with. So as you remember, in this brief, the player is flying around in a stealthy ship and trying to avoid drones. It's all about avoiding detection. 
So combining these aspects, I wanted to make a barrier that evokes sound and radio waves. If the player gets too close to the perimeter, these listening antennas rise up. The closer the player gets, the higher they rise out of their bases. So if you are far away from these barriers, they would almost be completely hidden until you started getting close. And stealth games tend to measure noise as part of gameplay. If you walk slowly, you stay quiet. But if you need to go somewhere quickly, you're going to risk making a little bit more noise. My thought was to embody that visual in the physical shape of this play space border. Seen from the top, the player approaches the fence, and in doing so, they're a slightly different distance from each of these pylons. The player is the closest to the center pylon here, and then slightly further away from all the neighboring pylons. So if we were to see the height of these pillars with these little glowing red lights on top, we're almost looking at one of these waveforms from a stealth game. If a player sees these red lights, they'd want to turn around. And then when they move further away from the pylons, the antennas recede back into the ground. I also imagine them having some sort of a hum or maybe a sonar sound effect from the player starts getting really close. Because remember, design isn't just limited to visual indicators. Sound and animation are great options as well. So I've met the criteria for Ryan's brief. I've separated the play space from the out-of-bounds area, and I've done it without blocking the desert view. Additionally, the aesthetic I chose reinforces the stealth and surveillance aspects of the game. So let's take a look at your homework. In this third-person co-op game called Alien Summer, Ryan has you designing a barrier of some sort that's going to keep these teen adventurers within their neighborhood. So you're designing a prop or a set of props that'll help reinforce this figure-ground relationship without being too visually jarring. Honestly, just reading about this makes me think of the show Stranger Things, and that sounds like a fun challenge. So if you want a copy of the brief, make sure to download it as a PDF below the post. And have fun with this assignment. When you're done, I'll see you in the next lesson.